In this video, we look at a new function, but we do pretty much the same thing that we did last time. Basically, we want to know a lot of things about this graph of f. We want to know the domain of the function. We want to know where the function's increasing and decreasing. We want to know where the graph is concave upward and concave downward. And we want to use the first and second derivative test um, to infer relative extrema. Usually, I use the first derivative test to find the relative extrema, and then I confirm my results using the second derivative test. Then we also want to find any points of inflection. Those are x values where the graph changes from concave, or those are, excuse me, uh, ordered pairs where the graph changes from concave upward to concave downward or concave downward to concave upward. And then we'll graph f. Um, so with that in mind, let's start by finding the domain. It's actually relatively easy this time. Um, the domain um, of f includes all x values except those that cause division by zero even roots of negative numbers and logs of negative numbers. We don't have any division by any functions of x, so we don't have to worry about that. There are no even roots, so we don't have a square root, fourth root, sixth root, nothing. So we don't have to worry about that. The only thing that we have is this logarithm. Um, so what's inside the logarithm has to be positive. Well, it's just an x. So x must be positive, so our domain is 0 to infinity. OK, so now we know our domain. Now to. Um, infer where the function is increasing or decreasing, we compute the first derivative. So you've got 1 half times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, minus the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x. The 2 and the 1 half reduce. And so you've got x minus 1 over x. Now, if you want to, you don't have to. You can get a common denominator here. There's an implied 1 there. So I can multiply this by x over x. And then the common denominator is x, and we just subtract the numer numerators, excuse me. So have x times x is x squared minus 1, all divided by x. So that's our f prime. Um, so that's what we do first. Um, we compute f prime when we want to find the critical numbers. And then um, we do want to find the critical numbers of f to determine where that function is increasing or decreasing. Now remember, critical numbers are where the derivative is undefined or the derivative is zero, but they have to be x values in the domain of the function. So um, I'm going to keep factoring that. That numerator is a difference of squares. So that's x plus 1 times x minus 1, all divided by x. So in this, with this factor in form, we can say f prime is equal to 0 when the numerator is 0, but the denominator is non-zero. So that's when x plus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. So that means that x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to positive 1. But we only want the x values that are in the domain. And since the domain is 0 to infinity, we're, this is the only critical value here. So we've got a critical value. Now f prime is undefined. We'll say is undefined when that denominator is 0. But the denominator equaling 0, um, that just gives us x equals 0, and x equals 0 is not in the domain. Now remember, critical values are those values where the derivative is 0 or the derivative is undefined, but they have to be in the domain. So it turns out we only have one critical value. It's 1. So now we're going to look at the sign of f prime on its domain, which starts at 0. And then we list any critical numbers on that number line. So we go from 0 to infinity, and we list our critical number there. And then we say f prime is x plus 1 times x minus 1, all divided by x. Now, x is positive on both of these intervals. x plus 1 is also positive. If I take a number, a positive number, and I add 1, I still have a positive number. If I add a number that's greater than 1, say 2, I'm going to get a positive number. But x minus 1 changes signs at x equals 1. When x is greater than 1, let's say 2, we get a positive value. And when x is less than 1, say 0.5, we're going to have 0.5 minus 1, or 1 half minus 1, which is going to give us a negative 1 half. So f prime is this positive times this negative, which is negative, divided by a positive, which is a negative value. So f prime is negative there in that interval. And f prime is a positive times a positive divided by a positive, which is positive there. So that's our f prime. Uh, or those are our signs of f prime. And that can tell us uh, when the function is increasing and decreasing. That was one of our questions. So we know our function is increasing whenever the derivative is positive. So our function is increasing on the interval from 1 to infinity. And it's decreasing on the interval from 0 to uh, 1. 
So we know that that's true. And we know that the function has a zero derivative at one. So the function goes from decreasing to having a zero derivative to increasing. So we have a relative min at x equals one uh, by the first derivative test. So f of one is one half of one squared minus natural log of one. Natural log of one is zero. So we just get one half. f of one equals one half. And that is a relative minimum of f. OK, so f of 1 equals 1 half is a relative min, we'll say, by the first derivative test. OK, so we found a, a relative extremum. Um, it was a relative min of, of 1 half. All right. And um, we are also interested in where the graph is concave upward or concave downward. Um, so we need to take the derivative of this um, to compute the second derivative, and then we'll look at the sign of the second derivative. So let's do that. F double prime of x is the derivative with respect to x of x squared minus 1 divided by x. So we're going to use the quotient rule. So we have its low d high. So it's the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus high a d low. Derivative of the bottom function is just a 1. And then we're dividing by low low. So we're dividing by x squared in this case. If we actually distribute there, we get 2x times x is 2x squared. Distribute that negative through the parentheses. You're going to have negative uh, x squared there. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 all divided by x squared. There should be an x squared there. So we're going to have 2x squared minus x squared is a positive 1x squared plus 1, all divided by x squared. So f double prime is this. Now that is always positive. It's always actually, if we um, divided uh, each of these terms by uh, x squared, we get 1 plus 1 over x squared. So that slope, or that second derivative, is always uh, greater than or equal to 1. As x goes to positive or negative infinity, we're adding a tiny positive number here. So the asymptote of this, as x goes to positive or negative infinity, is 1. And so we've got this function has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Um, but at, um, and it's undefined at x equals 0. Uh, but we see that that uh, second derivative is positive. So f double prime um, is never 0. Because you've got 1 plus a positive number. So that means the original function f, or let's say the graph of f. I'm not sure if I should say f or the graph of f. Has no inflection points. But there is an x value where f double prime is undefined, and that's 0. And let's look at the domain again. For this function, our domain was 0 to infinity. So actually, when I look at f double prime, I'm only interested in this interval from 0 to infinity. And this, this set of x values is not in the domain. So we just look at the sign of x squared plus 1 divided by x squared. This is positive in the numerator, um, or that's greater than or equal to 1 in the numerator and greater than or equal to 0 in the denominator. Um, so we're going to get um, a positive divided by a positive, which is positive here. So our graph is concave upward there. All right, so we know that the graph is concave upward. on 0 to infinity. And we know um, that the graph has uh, a relative minimum, or the function has a relative minimum at x equals 1. And that relative minimum value is a, a value of 1 half. And then we know that x equals 0 is where the function starts. And 1 half of 0 squared is just 0. 
And then as x goes to um, approaches zero from the right, natural log of x, we look at the graph of that. Natural log of x goes to negative infinity as x approaches zero from the right. So I'm going to have something that's very large and negative times a negative one. So this function should approach positive infinity as x approaches zero from the right. So I have zero minus a large negative number is going to be a large positive number. So I think this is what my graph is going to look like. Got that vertical asymptote. X equals zero. Then we said when X is one, Y is equal to one half. Is a relative, was that a relative min? The relative min. And the entire time on zero to infinity, the graph is concave upward. So I think my graph should probably look like this. Approximately, as x approaches zero from the right, the y values go to positive infinity. And then obviously, as x goes um, to a positive infinity, this is this function is going to positive infinity, and natural log of x is also going to positive infinity. So that's an infinity minus infinity in determinate form. But the log of x does not grow very fast. Its slope is only 1 over x. Um, so as x gets larger and larger, the slope gets smaller and smaller for this one. But the slope of this is 2x. So when x is a... Or, we have two x times one half, or the slope of this one is x. So when x is 100, the slope of this is 100. And then we'd be subtracting uh, the slope of this one, which is one over 100, which is very small. Since this function grows so much faster than this one, as x goes to infinity, that one half x squared actually dominates, and that infinity minus infinity indeterminate form turns out to be infinity. So we get a uh, behavior like this. And you're like, how do you know that? It's because I'm comparing the slopes. I'm comparing that 2x to 1 over x. And I know that that's grow growing a lot faster than the 1 over x as x gets very large. Okay. Um, so this is my function. And the derivative was that uh, x squared minus 1 divided by x, which is this. If you want to, you could divide each of those terms by x. You have x squared uh, divided by x, which is x, minus 1 over x. So f prime actually has a slant asymptote. As x goes to infinity, this as x goes to positive or negative infinity, this part goes to 0. And then x is um, or the function, or the uh, derivative function actually approaches y equals x. As x goes to infinity, the y values on this graph are just slightly smaller than y equals x. So my asymptote looks like this. Oops, it should, be, it should actually be steeper. y equals x, something like that, sorry. Not that. We have x minus 1 over x. And um, we can graph that. And then the second derivative, excuse me, um, has that as its graph, or it has that as its equation, which is the same as that. Um, so that is also undefined at x equals 0. Um, and it has a horizontal asymptote y equals 1. So we should see that the slant asymptote of that first derivative, the horizontal asymptote of the second derivative, all in the same graph. I was going to try to graph f prime and f double prime here, but I think it's a little bit difficult for me. And so rather than doing that, I think I'm just going to use desmos.com to graph those. So let's do that now. So here's our function. 
we said that we have a relative minimum at x equals one. So let's plot one f of one. The y value is one half there. That's what we got. We found that using the first derivative test. Now we could have just as easily evaluated the second derivative at that x value. And we would have seen that at x equals one, the second derivative is that one x squared plus one divided by x squared. Actually, let's let's type that. F prime of x was um, x squared minus one in the numerator divided by x. Now we're only interested in the branch of that where um, the original function is well-defined. So we want, we're interested in f prime on the domain of the original function. So we get that at x equals one, um, f prime goes from negative to positive. So the original function goes from decreasing to having a zero slope to increasing. So that's good. And if we want to graph f double prime, we can. And that turned out to be x squared plus one in the numerator divided by uh, x squared in the denominator. And these graphs have, well, this one has a slant asymptote, y equals x. And then this function has a um, horizontal asymptote, y equals one. Okay, so let's just look at those one at a time. The as uh, derivative f prime does approach that slant asymptote. Doesn't actually help us when we look at the graph of f though. But it is kind of cool when we are just looking at the graph of f prime and see that it approaches that line. Zoom square, then we can see that that's y equals x. And then if we look at the second derivative, we see the second derivative is always positive. Again, we're only interested in that part of the second derivative on the domain of the original function. So on zero to infinity, second derivative is this uh, purple graph. It always lies above the line y equals one. And since, since this uh, function values for the second derivative are always positive, the original function is concave up on its domain. That's what we see. And we took the limit of the original function as x went to zero from the right, and we said we got positive infinity. That's consistent with our graph. And then I just made an argument that the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is infinity because this one half x squared grows faster than natural log of x. Um, is it's an infinity minus infinity in determinate form technically. But since this function grows faster than this one, um, since that's the case, uh, this function dominates as x goes to infinity. And so in the sort of battle between the x, one half x squared and the natural log of x, this function wins as x goes to infinity. So this function, so f of x goes approaches infinity rather than negative infinity because this function dominates this one. Uh, and that's what we see on the graph. The y values go to positive infinity as x goes to positive infinity. So we know where the graph is concave upward it's, um, all the time on its domain. It's decreasing from uh, zero to one and then increasing from one to infinity. And the um, if we evaluated the second derivative at x equals one, we would see that the second derivative is just uh, two at x equals one. Since the second derivative is positive, we know the graph is concave up. We're at the bottom here. So we have a relative minimum. That's what the second derivative test says. And then we made a sign chart for f prime and said f prime went from negative to zero to positive at x equals one. So um, we have a relative min there. So both the first derivative test and the second derivative test are giving us the same answer there. Um, so that's good.
So yeah, that's our graph. The graph isn't that interesting this time. But when I look at this 1 half x squared minus natural log of x, I don't necessarily know what that looks like. Now I do. Now I have a sense for what a second degree polynomial minus natural log of x should look like. Uh, but um, in general, I wouldn't know what that looks like. I know what natural log looks like. I know what x squared looks like. But I don't know what it looks like when I put them together. So I wanted to examine that um, and then compute the first and second derivative and use those um, to infer um, when the function's increasing or decreasing, when the graph is concave upward or concave downward, um, and where we have relative extrema. So we did that. And that is our second example. I think we'll do the same thing for one other example in the next video, and then we'll be done with problems like this. At least uh, for functions involving logarithms, we might revisit these problems with exponential functions, um, inverse trig functions, and other transcendental functions.